Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to today's tutorial. Today is an updated way in which we can bake maps in 3D Studio Max 2021. So with that being said, let's get started. So I have two models here. I have my high poly model and my low poly model. And in order for this work, I need to select my low poly model and I need to align it to my high poly model. With the low poly model selected, we can look at some of the options. So before we would go to render, and then we choose this option that says render to texture. Now this is now considered the legacy mode, okay, in how to bake um, textures. And so before what we would do is we would choose enable for the projection mapping, select our high poly model, choose the um, channels in which we want to bake these maps into, and then we would choose the type of um, map that we want to bake. Now, if we look inside here, you can see that the it's quite limited in terms of what can actually be rendered using the scanline render. So we can render diffuse maps and light maps, complete map, uh, but that's about it. And actually what we may want to do um, in, for example, for using a game engine or um, maybe some other type of application is we may want to bake out cavity maps, dust maps, density maps, and so on. And so the new system allows us to do that. So in order to access the new rendering system, okay, we go to render, and we choose this option now that says bake to texture. And now you can see the dialog box is much, um, much more simpler and a much cleaner in my personal opinion. Now we can click the option there that says add, and you can see that we have a whole wealth of different maps in which we can add. Now, we only want to be using Scanline for this example. So what we need to do is go to Rendering, Render Setup, and we can choose under the renderer, change it from Arnold to Scanline. Once we do that and we go back here, we can see that the amount of maps that we can now um, produce is much more limited. But you can see that now we have access to baking things like cavity maps, density maps, dust maps, occlusions, and so on. So this is really great. Now. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to bake out a diffuse and a uh, normal map, and that's going to allow me to show you some of the features, um, especially some of the new features that we have here. So we're going to press this option that says Add. And so basically because we have the low poly model selected here, it's automatically assumed that we want to bake those maps onto that um, model. So remember, you need to have your low poly model selected before you add the maps. Then when you add them, you can press Control A, all right, and this will select everything. And the reason we want to do that is because now we can change all of the settings for all of the maps at the same time. So the first box basically says um, the type of map in which we want to uh, bake. So we've got diffuse and normal map. The second one is the projection method. Okay, so right now we set to self, and what we need to do is we need to choose this pick from list and it's gonna give us um, a list of objects in our scene. And I'm gonna choose the high poly model and click add. And you can see that once we've done that, both of the methods for producing the diffuse and the normal have been um, selected as the uh, projection method. Now I can press the F key so I can see the cage a little better here. And I'm gonna go to the cage and I'm gonna reset this. And then I'm just going to extend, oops, let's try it again, extend the cage so it encompasses the entirety of our high poly model. All right, now, after that, we have this option here, this little cog, and if we click this, we're going to be presented with uh, the two different main methodologies in which we can um, produce our maps. So the first one is cage, and this is gonna be the most common one. The second one is we can use the ray trace, okay? So if your shapes are very similar and there's not much deviation in the overall shape, you may want to choose a ray trace method. However, if you have maybe a more complicated model and there's some um, larger irregularities, you want to choose this so you can have finer control. Now, I could, in this particular example, use the ray trace because the two models are very similar, but I'm going to just choose the cage and press OK. All right, after that, we have the size of our texture maps. Okay, so maybe we want to change this to 4K, 8K, and so on. I'm going to choose maybe 1024 for this tutorial. Now we have two options for the heights for the X and Y. And right now we can't access the other one. And that's because the padlock is enabled. If we disable the padlock, we can now choose independent sizes. So I'm going to enable this because I want to have um, square textures. 
Then we have the padding. So how much, um, how many pixels outside of the UV spaces are going to be given for bleeding? So you may want to change this to some other value. Then we have the names of our maps. After that, we have the file type. So maybe we want to use uh, uh, maybe something else like a JPEG or a PNG or a tagger or something like that. Then we have the options. Okay, let's just select everything again. Then we have the options for each individual file format. And then after that, we have this output too. Now what output two does is it will allow us to create a new material. So for example, create new material and we can choose perhaps a physical material. Then once we've done that, we can then inside of here, choose the slot in which this would be um, placed in. So for example, the diffuse map would be, be placed in the base color. And so what this gonna do is once we um, generate our maps, it's automatically gonna create a material and then it's going to assign those maps into that material and then assign the material onto our low poly model. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it to um, files only because I just wanna be showing you how this works. I'm not going to be building uh, materials here. All right, so that's basically for those settings. Now, if I select the normal map, we have some um, new settings which are um, a little better for the things that we may want to do. So we have the type of normal map in which we wanna produce, so we can choose tangent, world, screen, and so on. But now we have this option here for the sync with. And so what sync with is, is it's going to say, okay, I'm gonna produce a normal map and it's essentially going to be outputted to this other application. So for example, if you um, maybe work with CryEngine, Unreal, Unity, Maya, and so on, you wanna choose this option. And uh, this is useful for us because then we don't have to flip the normals um, in order to get the correct display inside another application. All right. Now, besides that, there's this option that says make it tangent and then calculate uh, uh, bit tangents per pixel and the output into normal bump. So basically what these do, uh, they are for um, how different engines perhaps handle the normal map. And um, what you need to do is you need to check your specific um, application if it's going to be used inside another um, application whether or not this should be enabled or disabled. For this tutorial, I'm gonna disable this uh, calculate um, bits tangents per pixel. Now, because we're using this uh, Max kit uh, for tangent, we need to make sure that the display inside Max is the same. So in order to do that, we need to go to customize, preferences, and you can see that right now the default um, normal bump mode is 3ds Max. What we need to do is we need to enable this option here so it matches the one in the um, baking options. And if we uncheck this calculate bit tangent per pixel, we also need to uncheck it here. So we can press okay, and that's that set. Finally, we can choose the output in which to the location to where we want these maps to be saved. So I'm just gonna press select folder. And once all that's done, let's just select everything. And then we can choose this option that says bake. Now, once that's done, we can close this dialog box here that says it's complete and we can close this. Then we can look at our output and we can see that we have our two maps here. So I have this um, simple um, diffuse map, which is not really any use to us, but we ha now have this normal map, okay? And then we can assign our normal map into our scene and we're done. So with that being said, that is the new methodology of how to bake um, textures inside 3D Studio Max. If you like this uh, video, please don't forget to subscribe and like. You can also leave a comment on the type of tutorial you would like to see on this channel in the future. But until then, I would like to thank you for watching and bye bye for now.